Welcome to another exciting edition of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Goy. And I'm Mr. Magazine. Take me out to the ball game. I sure hope that's in the public domain or else we're going to be taken down. Gosh, I wish I had a baseball <laughs> bat right now. <laughs> what is this? S-G-C. What is that? It's a uh, third-party grading company. Now, uh, are there competitors of theirs out there? There are, yes. There's PSA, uh, there's Beckett, uh, I think there's other ones. Probably those, some other those, small Those are the top ones. three, yep, yeah, yep. for sure. So we had a situation where we had some cards that we've shown you previously, Cy Young and Ty Cobb, as a matter of fact, um, which cannot be sold on eBay unless they're authenticated by a third-party uh, authenticator, such as S SGC or, or Beckett, et cetera, et cetera. And you chose SGC. Can I ask why? Uh, a couple reasons. Um, Number one, their turnaround time was a lot faster than the other companies being swarmed with all the people buying up cards during COVID. Everyone's getting their cards graded and so forth. Um, turnaround time for other companies could have been months and months. Uh, SGC would do it in a week. And obviously, you have to pay more for that, but uh, uh, it was like $100 a card, but for these cards, it was well worth it. But also, um, they're also known to be very competitive in their uh, grading for the uh, older cards, such as the T206s. And, and I don't know as if this comes into it or not, but... I'm working on a couple of sets that are graded sets, and I want all of the cards from the set to be from the same grading company. Sure. Um, in other words, I don't want to mix grading companies no, on right, things. Right. So I would think that if a lot of people are working on an SGC set, they want to continue getting the SGC. Not that they wouldn't necessarily buy a PSA if it's right. a difficult card or one that they needed, sure. but what they might even do at that point is break it out of the holder and send it into SGC right, yeah. just because they want uniformity across the set yeah. so if a lot of people are working on sgc sets of the t206s um then that's a good reason you know to continue using that service um how difficult was it now i remember back in the day with psa you had to sign up you had to become a member you had to pay uh if i remember right you had to pay an annual yeah, fee in order to be able to submit cards etc yeah. etc all of that stuff still going on with sgc uh, or this no? is pretty easy it's all online now so you know once i figure out what to do and you know what to click and so forth it didn't take much time at all now did you have to sign up and be a member or anyone no. could submit anyone can submit oh yeah. wow yeah. so that saves you a fair amount of money because Sure. I forget what PSA was back in the day, but you had to it pay was, uh, it. hundred bucks a year. But you then you got so many submissions right, with right. it, this, that, this, that, and it was just difficult. Yeah. And then the other, from what I remember from my PSA days, and I expect SGC is, is the same as well, the other confusing part was the tiers that they were charging you based on, based off of value of card and right. everything like that. Sure. Um, I know I took a look at the form when you sent it in, and if I remember right, because you were having things expedited, mm -hmm. you realistically didn't have to worry about the tiers because right. it was such a high level. It was like $6,000 value or yeah, something like that. Yeah, unless you had the Honus Wagner or Mano Rookie, anything like that, then you got to go to the next tier. But uh, these all fell in that range. Oh, yeah. yeah, up to six. Because that was always the question, too. You look at a card and you're going, well, what do I want to yeah. pay for it? And, <laughs> you know, what, what's its real grade? What's it really worth? You know, so. Yeah. So why don't we crack open the box and sure. take a look here at what they came back. So these would be some Cy Young cards and some Ty Cobb cards, as I remember. Yeah, we'll start from the bottom off. Let's see what we got here. First card would be, looks like Cy Young. See-through, pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it was a 1.5, which I figured it'd be in the one, one, one and a half range on that. There's definitely some heavy creases. What do you think, paper boy? Yeah, especially with the rounding on the corners and everything yeah. over there. So it's got the... The back there, like I said, 1.5 portrait. Yep, neat card. And next one we got a Ty Cobb that came back as a one, also. Um, creases, you know, corner's pretty rough there. That's the back of it. And these are all up online right now, yes, correct. Very yeah. good, yep. Portrait red background, yeah. yeah it's got some uh, loss of paper up on the top corner and everything, too. So, yep, seems like a, an accurate grade on that. All right. So. Here's another Ty Cobb. That one's got a one as well. Heavy crease in the middle. Yeah, a lot of creasing on it there, though. But again, they do a very nice job when they put it into these holders as well. Sure. Oh, Definitely yeah. do. Nice. Definitely. Yep. So it's got the creasing across. It's increasing down in the bottom, around the corners, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, that's really, really normal. That's normal. For yeah. Oh yeah, for these cards. Yeah, for being so that old. Let's see, we'll do this sale next. 
which is a little nicer. It came back at two. two. Uh, nice. You know, I'm not an expert. I don't do this very often, but I thought it'd be a little higher than a two because I don't. Do you see any creases anywhere? No, no, it uh, does seem pretty nice there yeah. with the corners and everything Corner like that. Work, yeah. So, you know, the, oh, the, maybe is that there is a pencil I think in the back here in the, the bottom back, corner. Yeah, down yeah. The bottom. Yep. So I don't know if they. But the, you know, from one to two, it seems like it's a little tighter where it should be. You know, one to three or so. Who knows how their tiers are? But uh, here we got a two point five Cy Young, which is even nicer. And I thought this was going to grade it at three or four, but again, I don't know this. I don't do this very often, so. Nice little card over there. Yep, definitely, definitely. And then the last one. We got a tag cab too. Oh, nothing really. There we go. So, pretty good shape. You know, writing on the bottom like the other one, yep. but no creases. Yep. And then that's always. Um, and I meant to talk to you about this as well with the grading. And I think we've talked about it before when we talk about the comic book rating as well. Is <clears throat> A lot of people, I mean, how many times have you had people call you up and they've got collections of comics or cards and they're all mint? <laughs> yeah, right. And they've been in plastic yeah. since they came yeah. out and yeah. you're looking at it going, well, these are 1950s cards. I don't think they had plastic holders for them back right. in 1952. Exactly. Um, everybody tends to overgrade. Uh, you just do. You Well, at least if you're selling, you do. If you're buying, yeah. you tend to undergrade. Right. That's sure. funny how that all works out. Sure. You know? Um, but yeah, you're you're looking at the the thing and you go, hey, this is this is really really nice. And I remember the first time I sent stuff out to both PSA and to CGC on the comic side of things, I thought the comics were a lot nicer than the grade that they came back. And I, I guess you just, especially if you take a look at the uh, like Heritage, for example, some of the rare card rare uh, comic auction sites, it, it really does hurt you because you look at things, you're going, oh my gosh, that's a nine point two. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got a comic book from 1952, and it's a 9.2, right. and you're looking at yours going, this is beautiful, and it comes back, and it's a 5.5 or a 5 yeah. or whatever, and you're right. saying, wait, what, how is that possible? My card's nice, or my comic's nice. Mm -hmm. And I guess it just kind of lets you appreciate what the top of the top of the top is and how right. difficult it definitely is to get. Sure. Um, you know, know, I always tell people, too, when they ask me about, well, what do you think this grade's at, or should I grade this or that? And I say, send in your best four, and then... If it comes back sixes, you know, everything else is less than a six. You know, if you're expecting nines and they come back eights, then the rest are going to be less. So it gives you something to gauge, at least in the future. Right, right. And, I, and I, we're at a disadvantage because we very rarely do send things in. Now, the people that send things in all the time, you know, they can go through a pile and pick out the best comic or they can pick sure. out the best card and expect that it's going to get a 9-8 or going to get a, you know, a PSA 9 or whatever the case happens to be because they deal with them often enough. Right. Um, but then again, you run into some cards like these over here that, A, you have to have them graded to be on, on eBay. But, B, and, and I guess that's the reason why they have to be graded if they're on eBay. There's so many fakes out there that this right. gives people, uh, you know, the knowledge that they are real. They are authentic. And not only are they authentic, because I don't know if you've seen or not, but they will, you will, can get a grade of authentic. Right. From uh, at least from PSA, you can authentic, mm -hmm. which all I'm saying is, yeah, that's a real card. It's yeah, they did the same thing. SGC, you just check the box if you want it to come back. If it's not going to grade out, you can say check check authentic. Oh, really? There's no, there's no cost difference or anything. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so okay. They'll, they'll slab it with an A on there. Okay. Yeah. yeah so kind of kind of neat there. Nice little cards, and they're up there now. And hey, while I got you here, I think you've. Uh, put a lot of cards up there from the first video that we showed with all the T206s. Yeah, yeah. So why don't we go there and see what ended up happening. All right. So, so now we're over here at, with the things that sold. and Oh, that's a nice little card. All right. You want to you scroll? I'll scroll. Oh, you all can right. scroll there. Right. We'll start with the first one. This seems to be the highest price. We're going highest to lowest there. Uh, Ed Walsh, T206 card, but is hand autographed. And uh, I do give my own certificates with these to guarantee them for life, just to give um, buyers reassurance. And so, I think you were talking that a, a couple of uh, really knowledgeable collectors emailed you as well, instead yeah, that they they said yeah they looked you know they did some research themselves and they matched them up and they said yeah definitely legit and you can tell by the volume of these you know no one's gonna be forging these suckers and they all look you know from that time period mm -hmm. as well. So yeah. uh, we also had uh, Zach Wheat um, signed card. He signed it across the the card and its backer. So kept that together in a little sleeve so it didn't you know slip off uh, let's see chief myers 1100 bucks 
So it looks like the autographs were they were heavy, yeah, heavy, yeah. heavy ones, right, right. Yeah. But on the other hand, we weren't able to put up the Ty Cobb or Cy Young yet, which right. will go up, and those should sure blow these these. away. Oh, yep. yeah. All right, we got a George McBride saying card. They went for almost a thousand. Uh, Whoa! Yeah, this one here was uh, not autographed, but it was a rare variation, uh, broadleaf back. It was a uh, uh, Tom Downey. So that was almost 900 bucks. And so it's the back that did it on yep, that, not correct, nothing yeah. else. It isn't a rare pose or anything. It's the back. Exactly, right. exactly. Yep. Um, lefty Leaf Field autographed. And nice uh, best wishes there. So I added in. And now we're getting into the Hall of Famer there. Yep. Oh, yeah. Chrissy Matheson. Yep. Um, I'll let you pronounce this one. I always get this wrong. <laughs> Nap. All right. <laughs> Nap. I'm about to take one in a minute. Uh, autographed Tommy Leach, almost 500 Another Matheson, uh, another nap. <laughs> uh, this one was a Hall of Fame postcard. One of the originals were white, and then they switched over to yellow. Oh, right, yep. Uh, but this was signed by Sam Crawford, who put his nickname uh, Wahoo in head of it, which is, you know, a rare occurrence oh, okay. back then. So pretty cool piece. And a, a lot of these, two, I was checking the bids at the end. They all got crazy heavy bidding right, you know, right before the. So end. everybody yeah. had them as wa on their watch list yeah. and used yeah. uh, sniping or jumped in themselves. Exactly. Now, how did you uh, have have them ending, like a couple of minutes apart, uh, or? Yeah, we had them a couple minutes apart so people could have time to get to the next one and so forth. Um, we did the ten day auctions ending on Friday, so they ended on Sunday. Um, well, that was yeah, it's news. There was definitely a, a lot of bidding at the end. Like this, Sam Crawford was like fifty to hundred bucks, and then ended up going for four hundred minutes right later. Right, last minute. Yeah. Right, right. Um, let's see. Another Christy Matthewson, I see. Yeah, Matthewson. Another. Who's this? Oh, Sam Crawford Sam autograph. Crawford. This was cool because he definitely wrote a little paragraph down there. Mm-hmm. To barefoot, obviously, the original owner. Right. Right. Uh, Eddie Collins. Collins yeah. yeah. Frank Chance. So really, the biggest surprise is. Uh, the one, the one rare back right, is yeah. definitely the biggest surprise so far because yeah. most of these, you know, Joe Tinker, Johnny Evers, yeah. you know, obviously all really Vic Willis. Yeah. Uh, Fred Snodgrass. Snodgrass. Uh, we also had a signed oh, yeah. photo of him as well that uh, I'm not sure if it's sold or not, but it's, it was up there for bidding. But, yeah, these, these Chief were more Bender. than just their names. They Pitching no like, trees, wow. So yeah. there's all, all kinds of different variations yeah. on there. And they got the books, and you can go online to see these. are sites that have all that on there, which makes it easy for us when we're listing them too. Oh, right, right, because yeah. who would know they're supposed to be trees? Yeah, no clue, yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, when he said portrait yellow, that means there's a portrait with a different background on it? Correct, yeah, yeah. Okay. Portrait red, right, okay. Because I think they released these over a few different years as well, as I remember. Is it 1909 through 1911? Yeah, so they, may have yeah done, they spaced them all, yeah. They may have done the same guy in two or three different years. Oh, John McGraw. It's a Finger and air, right. 179. So it's just card after card after card. And again, these are all Hall of Famers here. Oh. Three Finger Brown. Davy Jones, Jones, Tinker. So those are all signed ones, yeah. Tinker. So again, it looks like the Adrian Joss. It looks like all of the top players, other than that one rare back, right. um, the top players went for the money. So there was sure. apparently no rare, rare cards other than that one back, Correct. because otherwise yeah. they go the way that you would expect them to go. Right. There were some $100 ones that were you know, maybe a little less rare or something, but not common either. So. Right, right. And then this is Patty Livingstone, who uh, he also wrote that three-page letter we got off the oh, right. right now. Yep. Yep. So it's just, just unbelievable stuff and, and just, a, just a great collection. But even Hall of Famers in rough shape are going for 100 to 150. You know, Sam Crawford, Joss, Doyle. Yeah. And so now I, I know we're, we've got a video coming up on some other stuff. I guess we'll be putting up some uh, T205s and yeah. some other miscellaneous cards. I think there's some Coogan's chips in there, if I recall properly. Uh, then there's just uh, American Caramel and Philadelphia Caramel cards and a lot of other things. And we show uh, all of those cards as well. So it should be real, real interesting. Got a strip card, if I remember right, a Cy Young will be coming up. Um, and actually, I think the big kahuna, Babe Ruth, is going to be in there as well. Now, That's that right. is another card that I believe we have to get graded. Uh, so we'll be sending that off as well. Probably save up a couple of other cards and send them off to SGC right. to get graded. Sure, sure. So just, you know, you can certainly uh, look at the collection yourself. Uh, we've got the other video that shows all of these cards before they went up. And you can check all this out uh, on eBay. Uh, just search T206 
under Mr. Dash Magazine, and you can go through and see all these cards yourself, um, you know, and click into them and take a look at them as well. It's just a once-in-a-lifetime collection. It's just great to be a part of it, and it's just card after card after card of just, just beautiful cards. So hopefully you enjoyed this, and hopefully we're uh, able to continue to bring you some great treasures from this collection. Till next video. Take care. Bye-bye.